this is in some ways the biggest patch we've had yet to Splatoon 3. Not because of the added challenges to the game, but because of the quality of life and balancing changes. And now, they've made using private battles easier than ever with a URL function. You can now invite people in advance to a private battle room by sending them a URL to join. Anyone with the NSO app can then click on this link and then see the room in their game. How am I so confident that you don't need friends? It says so in the in-app screenshot that Nintendo shared. The first bullet point makes it clear as day that any player who knows the URL can join this battle, unlike regular private battles. This is a game changer and guarantees visibility of a room to anybody who needs it. This is a great change for one-off and temporary rooms too. In tournaments, someone could just drop a link into a battle fight chat to instantly connect with the other team without needing a pool or a friend code. Want to play with a few of your friends? Send them a link. Want to 1v1 someone in a Discord server? Send them a link. Want to play with multiple people at the same time in a small setting? Want to get a group of people together for bumper brushes, hide and seek, charger battles, regular old PVs? Send them a link. You could drop a link like this directly into a tweet to play with your followers and friends. Streamers could pin a link to a private battle to a YouTube or a Twitch stream to seamlessly let people into their rooms without having to break the room. You know, as long as people leave after their turn is up. There's no need to worry about refreshing for a room inside of a pool or refreshing a friends list when you can just click the link and get the room to show up. Then all you do is tap on the room, and if it isn't full, you'd get in right away. This won't be available for Anarchy, Turf War, or Salmon Run, so pools and their communities built around them will be unaffected. After all, these links only work when you have access to them. Pools run on common sense at times, as well as also passing around a word that people want to use, like Salmon Run, or Table Turf, or our community pool of Autobomb. Players will still want to use pools to play together while waiting for a turn to play in a main private battle in a stream, or to find new friends outside of solo queue quickly during events like Big Run, Extra Work, Splatfests and Challenges, or for those that don't have it at all, like Table Turf. You can't just go into Table Turf and find somebody to fight, you need to use a pool or be in a community. After all, you're gonna have to play more table turf if you want to get anywhere near that new 999 rank. <laughs> they really said, oh yeah, let's just put the table turf max rank at all nines now and see who runs for it. Squidman? <laughs> I'll make a full video about URLs once I've had the chance to test them. What a great patch. Second of all, you know I love the pool function. I made a video guide on how to use it the day after it came out. They've made it even easier than ever to engage with your community inside of a pool by letting you send more notifications. And no more closing a room to get new people to be able to see the room. Just send another notif. Lovely. And now that pools function seamlessly with the URL function, you'll be able to play with people with and without the NSO app without ever having to add anybody. You can open your room using the URL and others in the pool. Your friends and people who use the link will all be able to interact with it. That's so good. The pool functionality will continue to be faster and easier for people who don't want to use an additional application to interact with friends. It's a great tool for a community since people can make multiple rooms all in one place. Where Pool struggles is that you can't guarantee that every single person sees every single room once you hit a sort of soft cap. I don't know where this value is, but it's definitely below a couple hundred people. If you have a link for your main room and polls for everything else, a community can flourish, especially in a stream environment. I like it a lot. And now I really want to talk about a bit of what people have also been yabbing about this patch. The weapon rebalancing. The people clamored and asked, and Nintendo finally punched Machine, Stamper, and Splash all in one patch. Will any of these weapons suddenly be unusable? No. But that's not the point. Allowing other weapons to have an opportunity to shine at a higher level is great. I personally prefer buffing bad things to nerfing the good things, but I'm not a dev. 
I just am biased towards enjoying Splatoon 1 style of having absolutely monstrous weapons that anyone can grab and go have fun with. Sloshing machine swings needing 5 extra frames is not a death toll for the weapon. The only thing affected is the timing between the swings. You can still shark just as easily as before if you're popping out of a swing and then swimming to reposition. Accurate, move-heavy play is just as usable as ever before. What will happen is Machine will further struggle against fast weapons in 1v1s since it will be punished harder for either missing or not reacting quick enough to get its 2-3 to three sloshes in before getting splatted itself. The machine won't be able to spam as many sloshes towards a tower. Essentially, adding those 5 frames means you'll be throwing about 6 sloshes in the time you used to throw 7. Machine players can't just go spam swinging into a group of opponents and go as unpunished anymore, which is a fair change. I'll still play machine just as much as before. What I'm talking about here with Machine also only takes into account its direct fighting capabilities and not anything like, you know, its movement when it comes to running around the battlefield, the fact that it will be getting less Booyah Bombs than ever before, and the fact that it will be putting a bit less paint on the ground. All these are kind of jumped at once with this nerf, and we'll see if it's a bit too much for the weapon pretty soon. I personally don't see this to be true, but I don't think that you'll see Double Machine ran around as much anymore which I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about. <laughs> You'll still see people who love using Machine continue to use the weapon. Now, Stamper's patch is not a frame data change. Instead, the dev team gut-punched its ink efficiency. The weapon can still be played, but now nowhere near as safely or as long as before. The efficiency nerf of 30% also alters its ability to swing wildly in Zipcaster form too, since every swing will matter a bit more before that Zipcaster runs out. The Stamper nerf is also aggressive and feels aggressive because it's happening all at once. Unlike with the machine where it's just been like bit by bit by bit. They were like, um, um, you're getting hit now, Stamper. Thanks. Stamper players in general have to conform to either running main saver or be prepared to refill their tanks more often. This change keeps players from being able to stay in place and or run around and just spam swipes. Just like how Machine can't spam its swings as carefree anymore. The Machine's change cannot be fixed with gear, but it can be fixed by altering playstyle and positioning a bit. The Stamper's playstyle doesn't have to change much if they're willing to alter their kits. And Splash? Uh, they're altering its paint a bit. They're making it a bit harder to get special as quickly. Less paint on the ground means a slightly slower crab. So how does this change the game? Keep in mind recency bias when the patch comes out, but you'll see people more willing to experiment in general. If other weapons, especially fast ones like Enzap and Junior, don't feel as much pressure, they can open up new ways for people to play the game comfortably. Stuff that also would often scrap with Stamper and Machine, like other dualies, like Nautilus. Those ones might be able to run around a little more comfortably. Weapons that struggle against their cover being blown, like rollers and blasters, might be happy to have a little less far away spam fire raining down on them. Please know that I'm disregarding the area of effect that Wiper Deco Missile might have, since we haven't seen it in action yet. Again though, I personally am against big nerfs, since it lowers the maximum potential of a weapon, and for players who do enjoy those weapons, it can be a bit rough. I do hope in the future they focus on buffing things now, instead of adding more nerfs. Also, um, good luck reaching the roller in Bubbler post-buff. <laughs> they made it bigger and stronger against your specials. It, it will be by the tower, and you will have to deal with it. Now, on to everything else. Did Nintendo finally fix Brella? They just might have. The patch notes go into heavy detail about the three Brellas in ways that definitely could give people hope. They've made it clear that the Brella and the Undercover hitbox are smaller than they're supposed to be at times. Fixing this will make them more reliable. For some reason, the tent change isn't in the weapon buff area, but they've gone ahead and literally made the tent hitbox itself just straight up thicker to combat a majority of the issues it faces, like latent shots going through the shield. Under a crummy connection, I'm sure that not every Brella shield will effectively block shots, but this is a great step forward, especially for the Tentabrella. And hey, 
If you want to see the tent do real damage, you might as well head on over to Salmon Run, where they've buffed its damage like crazy, alongside Undercover, Slosher, Reflux, and a few other of the weaker Salmon Run weapons. Did you notice the next few rotations ever so conveniently have these weapons available? Interesting, huh? We see you, Splatoon devs. That's all I really have to say about the patch. There's so much more that I haven't covered in this video, since it wasn't meant to be a complete patch notes overview video, so be sure to check out the full notes, which I've linked in the description. Remember that in the fresh season, it was the 3.1.0 patch that we saw a lot of the extra balancing go on to. I wouldn't be surprised if the same happens for 4.1.0 since the brunt of the balancing this season wasn't aimed at buffing and I know a lot of people, including myself, were expecting some kind of change to come around to a lot of the utility subs, seeing as a lot of the weapons this patch don't have bombs. Be sure to subscribe for more information on the URL update as well as other quality of life and balancing stuff in the future. Thank you for listening and I'll see you later.